Live. This is KIMA News at 6. How the victims pulled from a house fire are doing tonight. Plus, how to keep your children safe from the dangers of guns. And how one local program is helping to create more than just a few good men and women. Good evening, I'm Roxanne Vainuku. And I'm Craig Galbraith. So good to have you with us tonight. Topping our news, investigators have pinpointed a location inside a southeast Yakima house where a devastating fire started. Firefighters say the blaze started on a mattress in one of the bedrooms at 809 East Arlington. It broke out shortly after 3 yesterday afternoon. Finding the exact cause may be difficult, but fire officials say a lot of cigarette ashes were found at the scene. 74-year-old Spencer Davis remains in critical condition tonight, suffering from smoke inhalation and burns. His wife, Willie May, was upgraded to satisfactory condition. Authorities say both patients have existing health problems that are complicating their recoveries. Some scary moments for a semi-truck driver this afternoon. Authorities say his load shifted, causing the truck to roll. I uh, took the exit to loop around to North 1st Street, uh, Interstate 82, and it was going a little too fast and tipped over. The 33-year-old driver from North Dakota was leaving town with a truck loaded with apples. Traffic was slowed for a little while due to the rollover and another accident on Highway 12 near the I-82 interchange. No one was injured, and authorities say they do not believe alcohol was a factor in this accident. A man caught with stolen property from a high-profile home invasion robbery admits he is guilty of the crime. Glenn Dawkins faces four months in jail, but he gets credit for time served since November. Dawkins was caught with a credit card belonging to Violet Alvarez, one of the victims in a pair of home invasion robberies that happened in November. Alvarez later died, but the man accused of robbing her, Dwayne Kozlowski, was found guilty last week and could be sentenced to more than 25 years. Dawkins was caught with the credit card when police moved in on a house where Kozlowski was hiding out. Efforts to expand eastern Washington's economic opportunities internationally are getting a boost from Lieutenant Governor Brad Owen. Owen met today with local business, education and service leaders for a closed-door informal meeting in Yakima this afternoon. Owen says the group is working to form a program that will bring cons consultants to eastern Washington to see what our region has to offer. He says we may have a lot more than just agriculture to offer the world. We are pretty certain that they don't know a whole heck of a lot about eastern Washington. So that could be educational opportunities, that could be wine country, that could be agricultural products, uh, high tech. Uh, we have a firm here right here in Yakima that uh, is a, uh, does business with Boeing. The west side. Owen also met with business leaders from the Tri-Cities and Walla Walla areas to get their input for the program. The images of guns on television and in the movies are often very different from what we see in real life. But placed in the wrong hands, including children's, guns can change a life forever. Tonight in the final part of Protecting Your Child, KIMA's David Mancy shows us how to keep kids safe from guns. An extreme worst case scenario, what can go wrong when a gun falls into the wrong hands? In this case from 1999, a Yakima teen is mishandling a gun while at home. The gun goes off and a bullet hits his nearby teenage sister. The teen is sent to jail for her death. It doesn't have to be this way. Extreme cases aside, there are efforts to keep kids safe from guns. Just education. It's the best thing there is. You know, you teach them, you know, just from a very, very early age that that's just something they don't do. Gun locks have become an important tool in making guns safer in the home. On these, there's a little lock right here. And without that being locked, you can pull the hammer back all the way. As soon as you put the key in it, and then you give it a partial turn, and that little button pops up, and then the hammer can't go beyond that. It just bumps into the frame. Quite a few of the handguns and some long guns now have built-in locking mechanisms. Shooter supply owner Don Manning says education leads to respect for guns, which also leads to safety. Pull. Clay Pigeon's going to go. And again, marksmanship is, is not part of the class. What so is part of the class? Right teaching times. gun safety when it comes to hunting. As long as we can emphasize to the younger students, you know, the, you know, how important safety is, what I see with my own kids is that they, they don't take anything for granted. In this class, Dave Pitton shows students how to carry a gun safely and also the proper way to climb over a fence with a weapon. 
when you come to an obstacle like this, uh, yeah, you you treat it as this is a dangerous firearm. I mean, if it's not treated with respect, you know, you don't know what can happen. I mean, it can accidentally go. I'd make sure it's clear. Proper gun handling go techniques is something again. Hunter Greg Olin shares with his stepson Scott. Uh, especially make sure you check every few seconds to make sure you know where your partner is so at all times if I'm walking and we happen to cross paths I know Scott's on this side so I'm gonna want to hold my gun the other way. But like many other hunters his rifle isn't the only weapon Olin owns. He also keeps ammunition away from the handguns so that no loaded gun is left in the home. I'm gonna take the chance that I'd have to go get my handgun and load it myself and think that that would be adequate time uh, because I'd rather take a chance of someone breaking into my home than having my kids get into my handgun and my ammo. This is David Mancy reporting. Gun locks are available at most gun stores and gun shows. Hunter safety education courses are taught by volunteers through the state's Department of Fish and Wildlife. Natchez schools are asking for voters' help next month to help make room for more students there. Natchez Valley High School principal Rich Rula says the schools in the district are seeing high growth in enrollment. He says the schools are simply running out of space for students. One of the big needs is the, is the fact that our school district is growing in population and we've projected out in, into the year 2007 that we're going to gain probably 195 more kids. Uh, looking at all of our buildings right now and uh, that are at or near capacity, uh, for example, the high school, we just added a uh, uh, portable this last year with two classrooms and we're just basically we're running out of room. The bond is for $16 million. It will be on Natchez Valley voter ballots March 11th. West Valley High School has one of a few local programs that offer young people a taste of military life. But as KIMA's Nicole Sanchez shows us, the program is helping students no matter what their career goals. It's the kids and their, their eagerness to learn to accept responsibility and to, to just try new things. West Valley's Junior ROTC program is developing more than a few good men and women. I've basically done a lot of community service and it's taught me to be a better citizen actually and that's the mission of ROTC. But I've also learned um, a lot of good skills for dealing with people. The program has 170 students including ninth graders from the middle school. Chris, Ryan, Chris. Oh. Although the junior ROTC group is getting a glimpse of what military life could be like, that is not the program's overall goal. The military looks at this program as an opportunity to, to train young men and women in leadership and responsibility, self-responsibility and self-discipline to, to be able to lead any organization. Well, it's teaching me leadership skills and I'm hoping that um, to become a teacher actually. So I think that the conflict resolution and leadership that I'm learning now is going to help me a lot. But if students do decide to go into the military after graduation, the program can give them an edge. Right now, I'm kind of going for a pilot in the Air Force. Yeah, I really want to do that. ROTC is going to help me get the scholarships for that, too. So no matter what the future holds for these students, the program is changing their lives and helping them grow. <laughs> I used to have a lot of problems dealing with people, and now with the ROTC, I've learned how to be so much more of a better person. And a lot stronger for it. In West Valley, I'm Nicole Sanchez reporting. Still ahead tonight, we'll show you how you can fight City Hall. And how local students are making a world of difference. Your programming is being interrupted to bring you this special report on Chevy trucks. Just announced, get 0% APR for 60 months on a 2003 Avalanche or Silverado 1500. Or choose $4,000 cash back on Chevy Avalanche. An easy mission for anyone to accomplish. Down the street at your local Chevy dealer.
tasty treat, nothing beats chocolate milk. With calcium and eight other essential nutrients, chocolate milk is the one drink you can feel good about. Healthy moms, healthy kids. Like we were gonna lose. Brought to you with pride by the Dairy Farmers of Washington. What's Papa Murphy's real pizza deal? Dough made fresh daily? Always. The highest quality ingredients? Oh, yeah. Freshly grated cheese? Naturally. That hot out of your oven home-baked taste? You got it. So what are you going to pay for a large pepperoni pizza? $12.99? $8.99? No way. Right now, get a large pepperoni loaded with cheese for just $5.99. Family size it for just two bucks more. The real pizza deal. Papa Murphy's Take and Bake. Pizza chain of the year. Surely you've heard the expression, you can't fight City Hall. Well, in tonight's Our Valley in Transition, KIMA's Mike Conklin shows us you can't. After two years, the rezone of Congdon Orchards is still unresolved, but the debate is more than about preserving neighborhoods, according to residents. It also points to the need for change and brings to the forefront critical development issues. There are people that are saying, you know, we're a little bit bigger city, we're in go undergoing tremendous transition, let's change the way we uh, plan, let's change the way we involve people in the process, let's change the way we look to the future, uh, those kinds of things I think are, people are giving a second look. And you'll get no argument here. There's, there's a, a, an agreement, a uh, total agreement on that. So what are the underlying development issues and challenges brought to light by the dispute? Well, for starters, as agriculture changes, Yakima will become more urban. So how will this change the development of ag land adjacent to neighborhoods into commercial and industrial projects? The Congdon Rezone pits two points of view that are still unresolved. The neighbors are interested in sort of sound community planning. And what that means is taking a community view and looking at an entire area and making it function and integrated in a way that all aspects work. But the city says it's done its job. Our zoning ordinance does envision that and in fact even lays out what that buffer between those two uses should be. And it's fairly minimal. Believe me, I think we've come and gone a lot further than that in negotiations between Walmart and Congdon City and the neighbors. The jury is still out on this specific problem, but the time to revisit policy guidelines may be on the horizon. We're somewhat learning as we go along. Next week, we'll examine other development issues that the Congdon Rezone has brought to light. For our Valley in Transition, I'm Mike Conklin reporting. And Our Valley in Transition is written and produced by freelance writer George Finch. Some Yakima City Council members are in Olympia today to make sure your voice gets heard on Capitol Hill. It's the Association of Washington City's Legislative Conference, a chance for our local leaders to take a close look at legislative issues affecting Yakima. The rules around annexation and, and how we get to annex. Um, in addition to that, the extension of sewer services or water services. Um, those are the big issues that are before us. Another top priority for the council is getting better funding for Yakima. They say cities are being asked to do more with less, and it's getting harder to provide needed services. Council members hope this visit will help keep Yakima in the funding loop. And I understand it's probably a good idea that the mayor and some of the council members headed over to the west side uh, yes. yesterday or today. Yeah, and hope they get back before tomorrow afternoon because we have a winter storm warning in effect for the Cascades coming up tomorrow afternoon through Friday afternoon. It's for the central and northern Washington Cascades. Cascade Mountains, that is. Of course, this is a legislative session, and I can get away with saying Cascade Curtain, can I? I think so. Yeah, of course. There is some good feel there is a Cascade Curtain. Well, definitely a cloud bank across the Cascade tonight, taped earlier just before sunset, and that cloud bank, that's uh, going to be the source of some moisture headed for the area. More after this. It's not just about saving money, it's about spending time and creating bonds, not just buying them. At Edward Jones, it's about more than investing, it's about knowing you. My Jones, investing in you and your dreams. Edward Jones, recognized as a leader in investor satisfaction. Right, Mom. Hey, Gail, what's with the uh, 
Oh, um, my wireless company didn't give me enough anytime minutes, so I hired a minute manager. A minute manager? Well, it's cheaper than always going over my minutes. Oh, sorry, Mom, I'm here. Oh! Gotta go. At U.S. Cellular, great wireless service starts with award-winning customer service. Which means you'll get minutes to use, not manage. U.S. Cellular, we connect with you. Get a Sony Ericsson T206 phone for just $29.95. Everyone's majoring in comedy at the Hollywood Squares College Tournament. Ah, uh, college. The best 12 years of my life. It's a week of collegiate fun with the Howard Stern Show's Baba Booey and Carmen Electra. Join me for a crash course in anatomy. I'd like to study Carmen's anatomy. And in the center square, Mr. Sensitive Simon Cowell. Don't be pathetic. Watch Hollywood Squares. Tom, this is like a frat house without the mooning and the vomiting. Hollywood Squares, tonight at 6.30 on the This portion of the news is brought to you by Chrysler. Good evening. A fairly weak weather system affecting the Pacific Northwest today. Actually, it was a split in that weather system. A lot of the moisture went to the south of us across northern California, leaving us with very little, but never fear. There is a stronger system out there in the Pacific that is headed for the Pacific Northwest tomorrow and Friday. That's the one that's going to be producing some blustery, rainy weather over on the west side and some heavy snows in the Cascades tomorrow afternoon through Friday afternoon. The north and central Cascades in particular. Here on the east side of the mountains, Cascades will be blocking a lot of that moisture from reaching us. But we're going to have the wind and a chance for some rain. 44 degrees in Yakima, Ellensburg 43, 48 at Top Edition, Sunnyside 50 at Grandview. Our breezes now, they're calm. Humidity 70%, barometers holding steady. High temperature this afternoon coming in above normal at 51. Low this morning, 31. Ellensburg with a, a high temperature today reaching into the 40s as well. Doppler radar showing a little bit of shower activity, but it's been mainly to the south of us. Following the Columbia Gorge, parts of Kittitas County, southern part of Yakima County, and of course, up in the Cascades, South Cascades a little bit. High temperature in Ellensburg, 48. Low this morning, 29. 47 for the high at Natchez. 55 at Toppenish. 54 at Sunnyside. 56 at Grandview. 53 in the Tri-Cities. 47 degrees over at, at uh, Seattle. And temperatures all for the most part above normal. Future cast showing the system coming in is going to be a snowmaker for the Cascades. But for us, maybe just a chance of some shower activity later on tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, then on into Friday and of course we'll be picking up the wind. Reason is we've got a tight low pressure system winding up in the Gulf of Alaska. The system today weak not really affecting us all that much although some heavy rain has been reported well to the south of us across northern California but we're really watching this incoming system. Low wrapping up in the Gulf of Alaska cold front that'll be sweeping on across the area behind a warm front that'll be scooting up from the southwest tomorrow. Lots of moisture entrained in that uh, system that will be headed for the Pacific Northwest, so it is going to be a substantial snowmaker for the Cascades coming up for tomorrow afternoon and Friday afternoon. Elsewhere across the country, some pretty active rain development and some isolated thunderstorm activity, mid-Mississippi Valley through the Ohio Valley and Tennessee Valleys. High temperatures while warming up in New York City to help melt the snow with a high today of 40, 82 in Miami, and 70 in New Orleans. Here's the forecast. Partly cloudy, some isolated showers, overnight low temperature around 30 degrees. Tomorrow, it'll be partly cloudy, 34 degrees at 8. At noon, up to 46. Some breezy areas coming in with the approach of that storm. 50 for the high temperature tomorrow. We could see a chance of a little bit of rain coming up tomorrow night and then on into Friday, but mainly it's going to be the wind affecting us. Windy again on Friday. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday turning a, a little bit cooler, but also drier. More of a northerly flow coming in, so high temperatures will be mainly around the mid to lower 40s. And here we go. Wrapping up the Cascades, this is the way it looks. Snow level tomorrow, 4,000 feet, lowering down to about 3,000 feet. Winter storm warning tomorrow afternoon through Friday afternoon. 12 to 24 inches of snow could be expected by Friday afternoon. Alan's making skiing plans right now for the weekend. I can tell that right now. We have snowmobilers who are, who are probably... Oh, hands in anticipation. So. Yeah. If you're driving, though, I imagine you're probably feeling a little nervous. Right uh, uh, well, yeah, probably so. And it could be a, a, a fairly wicked storm because not only will there be quite a bit of, uh, of snow, but also the wind's going to be picking up, too. So a strong westerly wind through the passes with the snow. It's not really a good combination. So if you're planning on traveling the passes, do check ahead. Mountain conditions change very rapidly around here.
Okay, Don't will do. find yourself in a mess. Thanks, Stu. Health workers will be the first in the state to receive the smallpox vaccination. Several public health care workers will be vaccinated against the disease. The vaccinations are part of the ongoing public health emergency preparedness and response work being done at Camp Murray. We decided to ask you your thoughts on the smallpox vaccine and whether or not the vaccine is really necessary. That's tonight's viewer's vent. Uh, I probably have had a smallpox vaccination when I was a child, so um, whether I would get one right now or not, I'm not sure. I would probably consult with my doctor. Side effects are pretty bad, and I think the vaccinations are, are, are tainted. They're, uh, they're, they're old vaccines. I don't think I would. I don't think I would. I have no problem with it. I never, don't even know what it's, why I would, I would need that. The smallpox virus isn't extinct yet. It's still out there. It's such a rare thing that I don't think the benefits would outweigh the risks. Let's look at sports now. <laughs> <laughs> With I Alan. guess that would be me. You know, yeah. this could be Gary Payton's <laughs> last game as a Sonic tonight. Really? NBA trade deadline. Yeah. It's tomorrow and several teams are interested. Tonight we are stepping out with the court gestures of round ball after the timeout. Your safety matters. Call before you dig. Our next award winner has gone platinum more times than me. Give it up for Dodge Caravan. Woo! Woo! Go Caravan! Go Caravan! Now during the National Caravan event, grab the best-selling minivan ever and get our best protection, a fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty, and our best deals like 0% financing for up to 60 months or up to $3,500 cash allowance. Add it up, it equals the best values in America at the National Caravan event. You know they thought I was in that caravan. Lawn care is a process, not an event. Colonial Lawn and Garden can help you with that process. Let us manage your landscape from sprinklers to spray. We provide landscape design, sprinkler installation and maintenance, pruning, and complete lawn care. Our program utilizes the best products available in the right combinations for a beautiful, healthy lawn. Now there's hydro seeding, just one-third the cost of sod. Hydro seeding controls erosion and establishes quickly. For a beautiful lawn and complete landscaping care, call Colonial Lawn and Garden today. Yo, man, this internet access is pretty good right here. Yeah, man, but we want high speed. Oh, oh that's well. How come we can't dunk? This is how you get high speeds. Oh, wow. Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. We, we do, do what we, we do, do best. best. And we, we do, do what we do, do best. Well, I'm stacking the out right here. It's a slam dunk. Northwest InfoNet has the best internet speed. Welcome back to Sun King's best win-loss record in the CBA National Conference, but still short of quarter points and still chasing Dakota. A win over Gary at the Sun Dome tonight would help. And heaven help the Sonics. They have lost six in a row. The Knicks visiting this evening. Can you say Big Nine title? First place in the line last night at the Pirate Ship. Davis and Pasco, home guys flying. Curtis Gomez Trimble to Terrell Cox, just like that, 3-0. Running through Bulldogs, Jeremy Mangum divides the purple to Curtis for the finish. Pirates, a 15-point lead. Pasco not dead, though. How about to the big guy? Trevor Dunson just standing there. It's a gimme. Dogs growling. Peter Gadd, that's good as gold. Oh, yeah. Somebody put a muzzle on those mutts. How about final seconds now? First quarter. That is Terrell at the buzzer. That's butter. Davis making toast. Out of the dog, 16 and 3 now. The Pirates clinching at least a tie for the league crown. Must wins of the season's over in the Mid Valley. Sunny side at Sela. Bikes attacking first. Eric Bell right there, ring it up. Down to Grizz. Alex Gomez drives, he fakes, he dumps it. Jake Thomas up and in for the deuce. This one goes down to the wire. Sela just one hoop better in the end. Corey Loveland, oh yeah, gonna pull it up and put it in from the corner. Vikings advance to meet Hanford Friday. Grandview, a winner over Ellensburg, will be at West Valley. 
Freddy Garcia will be the main man this season for the Mariners. The big right-hander slated to be Seattle's number one starter, Jamie Moyer, the lefty, next in the order. The Mike Tyson, Clifford Etienne fight back on. Great news for Portland's Tanya Harding. Fighting on the card in Memphis, Tanya, the celebrity boxing vet scheduled to fight a 21-year-old first-time fight. When you mentally prepare yourself for something and you are ready, everything, you know, is just mindset. It's like you're in the zone. You're ready to step into the ring. And if it doesn't happen, I'll be disappointed on that fact because I'm up, I'm ready. And then if you don't, you're just kind of like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya says she keeps her mental edge by thinking about who else? Nancy Kerrigan when she's punching the, those bags. Sweet Georgia Brown, the boys are back in town. The clown princes of hope putting on a royal performance last night at the Sun Dome. Globetrotters. That was those a guys fun can do show. the tricks. It was a great show. You know, they can hoop too. They're knocking yeah. down those yeah. 30, 40 footers. Talented guys. Yes, they are. Just like you. No. Thanks, Thanks Al. a lot. <laughs> well, there's much more news coming up tonight at 11. Stan Wallstrom in the newsroom with a preview, Stan. Coming up new tonight at 11, a National Guard helicopter with heat sensing equipment is now helping in the search for Sofia Juarez, still missing. Plus, President Bush with some interesting comments to the Spanish language TV network Telemundo today. We'll have that. And it continues to be Sports Illustrated's biggest seller out at newsstands today. She's uh, floating in a basket there. We'll have more on the SI swimsuit issue for you coming up at 11. He's blushing. Did he you notice? Yeah. You can tell it's a big 11 o'clock show coming up when you sure get the is. SI models. <laughs> Finally at 6, students at LaSalle High School in Union Gap are not only talking about making a difference, they're doing it in all parts of the world. 11 students recently returned from a Seattle urban immersion project. The group helped tutor children at a homeless shelter and also volunteered at a soup kitchen. Students say the project changed them forever. It was so inspirational. The children there and how happy they were was just wow for me. And the volunteers totally opened my eyes. Um, just seeing them working and living there was complete inspiration. The school also travels to an Indian reservation in Browning, Montana and to Tijuana, Mexico to help serve the poor. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope to see you at 11. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Join America's...